Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, Fatima Doman. So let me start by asking you, Fatima, how are you doing and how's your family doing? Thanks for asking. We have quarantined for several months. Just recently, our city has opened up and, it, you know, it's been a stressful time for many, many people. And you can sense the fear in people when you do venture out to the grocery store and so forth. And it's an incredible time in history, but I think an incredible opportunity as well to really discover our inner fortitude that part of ourselves that's unshakable. And that's what the science of positive psychology is helping many people to do. I love that. First of all, we should let our listeners know that you are in Park City, Utah, the beautiful Park City, Utah. What is positive psychology? What is the science behind it? And how does it work, Fatima? So positive psychology is rooted in over 800 global peer-reviewed research studies. It's wide open to academia, and therefore we have perspectives from all over the world. As a matter of fact, over 8 million people worldwide have taken the VS Strengths Inventory, which I offer on my website at AuthenticStrengths.com, and that strengths is plural, AuthenticStrengths.com. So as I talk about these strengths throughout this interview, I just want people to know that they can discover their own unique strengths profile. And this science is showing that we can pattern after what we know works for human flourishing. For example, traditional psychology, which is very important and has its place focuses on the disease model, what's wrong with people. But scientists from around the world, there were 50 of the world's most elite scientists that came together at University of Pennsylvania under the stewardship and direction of Dr. Martin Seligman and Dr. Christopher Peterson. And what they did was they cataloged 24 human character strengths and they created an inventory, you know, and kind of like the periodic table of elements. But this is a table that shows you these 24 character strengths that bring out the best in people. And then they studied them for three years. So we have a lot of information. And then since then, like I said, there have been over 800 global research studies and we have come to understand What helps people to thrive? So instead of focusing on the diseases and the mental illness and all of that, which we also, it's very important that we need that type of understanding, obviously, but we also need to balance that with understanding what gives people energy, what gives them engagement, what helps them to be more productive and so forth. You mentioned Dr. Martin Seligman, and there's a quote that I want to read for our listeners, because I think it's so relevant to what we're dealing with today with the coronavirus. And this is from Dr. Seligman. He said, the defining characteristic of pessimists is that they tend to believe that bad events will last a long time, will undermine everything they do and are their own fault. The optimists who are confronted with the same hard knocks of this world, think about misfortune in the opposite way. They tend to believe that defeat is just a temporary setback or a challenge, that its causes are just confined to this one case. How can our listeners take this to heart, Fatima, and not get overwhelmed by the daily onslaught of news about the coronavirus? 
Well, actually, hope and optimism are one of the 24 character strengths. And one of the things that I write about very often in my book, Authentic Resilience, but also I'm a contributor at thriveglobal.com, which is a great website for resources on well-being. So what I write about in those venues is that we can build any one of our character strengths at any time. And especially right now during this coronavirus, the strength of hope and optimism is a strength that we would probably want to focus on. And we know also from recent research studies on building resilience that there are some strengths that are more highly correlated to building resilience. One of them is bravery as well. So, you know, cultivating our bravery. And by the way, me personally, bravery has been rather low on my list. And over the past couple of years, I've been intentionally working on raising bravery. And it's a good thing because it has helped me as this coronavirus has come about. That's one of the strengths that I'm drawing on. And there's also the strength of spirituality that is very correlated with building resilience and overcoming adversity. And we're not talking about religiosity at all here. We're just talking about a sense of meaning and purpose. So people who can connect to a sense of meaning and purpose in their lives, especially during this time of the pandemic, they will have an added measure of strength that they can draw from. And I write about these strengths that are very core and integral to cultivating resilience in our lives. I'm going to ask you about your book, Authentic Resilience, in just one minute, but you made a really important point. You talked about how you've been trying to cultivate your strength of bravery over the last number of months. The fact is, we have, as Fatima mentioned, 24 strengths that have been documented by Dr. Seligman and others, and all of the research that Fatima also referenced. In positive psychology, we all have those 24 strengths. You have greater strengths and you have lesser strengths, but there's no such thing as sucking at something. There are no weaknesses, right, Fatima? Right. So the inventory, the VIA character strength survey that I was mentioning earlier that people can access for free on my site, they only measure strengths. The, the questions on that survey only measure strengths. Those questions do not measure weaknesses. So when you download this two-page report, you will see your strengths categorized, all 24, in order of which you express most often. Those are your top strengths or what we call your signature strengths. And they're as unique as a fingerprint we're discovering. There are over a sextillion possible combinations of these 24 character strengths and the degrees to which people express them. So each human being is very unique in the way in which they express their character strengths. So character strengths are that part of us, the highest and best part of us. What is most noble about humanity, right? So of the character strengths, you know, there are strengths like teamwork and leadership and love and kindness and forgiveness. And like I mentioned earlier, hope and bravery and zest and gratitude. So these 24 character strengths, we often refer to them as comprising what we call human goodness, not in the moral sense, but in the sense of contributing to what psychologists call the good life you know, a life that is satisfying and fulfilling and that also contributes to others. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee. 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.